morning students so let us see the digital electronic class in the previous class we talk about boolean functions boolean algebra in today's class we are going to see some numerical based upon it so today i'll take the overview of it how the boolean function is going to be work and we are going to see the de morgan's law in it and some simplification of based upon that we are going to see in today's class so let us see the some functions of it how it is going to work and what are the parameters we do have all those things in today's class we are going to cover so as you all know that in today's uh, in in day to day activity we are using digital gadgets everywhere and some part we, we are utilizing in the functionality so all those things we are covering in digital electronic part and the most application part would be the memory elements that memory elements we are going to used and how we are effectively can be used those things we are going to see in today's class see students once again this is important question so here they gave you z into y plus z x plus y plus z so this they asked to convert that particular thing into sop form this is in pos form product of sum that we want to convert into sop so in order to do those thing do those things what we are doing we are multiplying z with both so we got y into z z into z that is as it is then we had x plus y plus z so what is y into z we we cannot apply any kind of boolean law that is as it is z into z we can write as z by applying this formula likewise this is as it is x plus y plus z similarly this in this two term i can take z common so i took z common over here i got it as y here and one is left here so y plus 1 as it is x plus y plus z as it is similarly z as it is what is y plus 1 or 1 plus x formula by using boolean law it is 1 so we are keeping that is 1 So x plus y plus z as it is. This z into x plus y plus z you can write, or else you can write over here. Z you can multiply with the first, with second, and with third. So we can write here x z plus y z plus z into z. So x z y z it's as it is. We cannot do anything here. Z into z again we can write as z. So this is converted into. SOP form. This is right now, which is in form POS form. So this is our question that we convert into sum of product form. So students, uh, the next topic of our discussion would be the mean term and the max term. What is the mean term and max term means? Mean terms is nothing but sum of product. It is indicated by the letter small m. It has a symbolic representation of sigma. The second category of that is product of sum. so product of sum is nothing but the letter capital m and it is indicated by the alphabets like this so see this thing what is the meaning of mean term and the max term so each max term is completely given with the help of this particular form that is capital m m m like that and the mean term is indicated by the letter small m so here what actually i am doing i am taking one three variable i am taking three variable inputs or i call i am just considering this as three inputs so in this three inputs what i am doing i am taking x y and z this three value i i took next thing i have take a combination of it that is 0 0 0 that is digit 0 like that 0 0 1 digit 1 digit 2 like that till digit 7 so 0 to 7 total combination is nothing but 8 this same inputs i want to write in complement form what is the meaning of that complement form if i had 0 i'll mention as x bar if i had 1 i'll mention as x so like this i had 0 0 0 x bar y bar z bar next i had 0 0 1 so x is 0 y is also 0 that means x bar y bar z is 1 it is nothing but z next i had 0 1 0 so 0 1 0 means 0 means x bar because 0 is there for x and y is 1 that is y as it is then we had z bar so that's how it is written x bar y z bar so likewise i if i have 1 1 1 1 i can write x y z without any complement so this indication is called as mean term what is the first mean term digit 0 m0 m1 m2 m3 m4 m5 m6 and m7 so this 
indication the numbers what we had that numbers in short we can write like this or else that we can represent the terms here till now it, we uh, talk about the mean term likewise it's a reverse if you do have mean term complement if i'll take it i'll get the max term so what is the max term means here i am multiplying you can see x x bar into y bar into z bar that reverse i am writing for the second part in the second part what i am writing if i had zero i'll mention as x if i had one i'll mention as x bar it's a quite reverse so that reverse part in detail i'll show you in uh, this complete class on the board chalk and talk method i'll explain you so that it will be easy for you to understand this topic we covered in order to simplify some more problems based upon this topic they will definitely ask 10 marks question good morning students welcome back to digital electronic class in the today's class we are going to talk about the mean term and max term in the previous classes we discuss about the boolean theorems de morgan laws and the problem based upon boolean theorems and de morgan laws in today's class the main the main topic what we had is mean term and max term so in yesterday's class also I have explained by using the ppt what is the basic definition of mean term so what is the meaning of mean term so first thing mean terms if you are considering if you had the bit as zero then we are mentioning is suppose this is your complement a bar if you had the bit as one that bit i am mentioning as a that means Zero indicates the complement of it; it's a bar. One indicates its actual bit; it's a. Similarly, if you want to mention the max term, it's quite opposite to the mean term. So, max term indicates if you had the zero, then it would be a. And if you do have one, then that will be written as a complement. Second thing, what is the symbol? How the symbolic representation can be done? That symbol would be if you had that one and it mentioned in terms of sigma. Here. we are taking the terms in terms of pi similarly we took the symbol for both of them if you wanted to indicate that bits so that bits indication we can do with the help of small m here we are using the capital m so basically what is the use of the main term main term is considered to be the sop form what is sop stands for it's for sum of product here whatever the bits we are taking we are taking in terms of sum then that products we are going to be used that's how the mean term is going to be used likewise for the max term we are taking the reverse of it that is pos form what is pos stands for it's nothing but product of sum so that product of sum indication would be with the pi and sop form indication would be with sigma so this is this indication and symbolic representation now let us consider one three bit variables and how the truth table can be designed for mean term and max term in the previous video i have explained you in detail about it in today's video directly we are reaching to the point how to design it for that point first thing if you are taking three bit So what is the 3 bit indication total combination of 3 bit would be it's 2 power n so 2 power n how many 2 power 3 2 power 3 make it as 8 8 means what's the bit range from 0 to 7 likewise if you want to write its truth table we can design in this way so we do have Three bits A, B, and C. So, what is the first digit in this? We do have digit zero to digit seven. So, what is digit zero? Zero indicates. So, it's nothing but two power zero, two power one, two power two. So, two power two is nothing but four. This is about your two. This is about your one. So, what is the bit zero? Zero indicates all zeros. Likewise, what is one? One means we want one. It would be one. Remaining will be zero. likewise if you want to take it as 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 so what is the two indication so 0 we want second one it would be 1 this will be 0 if you want to get 
this will be 0, this is 1 and this is your 1. Likewise, if you want to get 4, it would be 1, remaining will be 0. If you want to get 5, it will be 4 plus 1, make it as 5. If you want to get 6, 4 plus 2, make it as 6. If you want to get 7, 4 plus 2 plus 1, make it as 7. So this bit, how we'll mention, the terms of the bit, how we'll mention in mean term. The first thing, what we are discussing about, mean term. So in this, what is the first bit we do have? That bit we want to indicate in terms of mean. So what is the zero indicates in mean term? Zero indicates it's a complement like A bar. If you had one, it indicates it's A. So we'll use that particular thing and we'll mention in that one. So all are zeros, that means it's A complement, B complement and C complement. Likewise, we had second. What is second one? A complement, B complement, C. Likewise, we had next. It's 2, so A complement, B and C complement because here 0 and 0 is there, that complement we need to write. Likewise, we do have 3. So to write 3, what we'll do? We'll write A complement, this is your B and this is your C. So we can write B and C. Similarly, if you want to write 4, how do we write 4? It would be A, then B complement and C complement because it's a 0, 0. 0 will mention in terms of complement. Likewise, you do have 5. So how do we mention 5? It's a here is 0 that means B complement and C next 6 so A B C complement likewise we do have 7 so it's A B C so this term how we do how do we mention in terms of mean like if you want to write Sigma so it's what mean term 0 M 0 M 1 M 2 M 3 M 4 M 5 M 6 and M 7 so they'll definitely give in the questions like this form so we need to convert in mean term likewise the same bits you want to mention for the second category so in order to do the second category what we'll do we'll write its term first terms for max in max term we'll write first addition so we'll take this reverse and we'll try to write in max term how do we mention we'll write a b c so it's there a plus b plus c so here in max term what we'll write? We'll write, if you had 0, that is nothing but A. If you do have 1, that is nothing but A complement. So it's quite reverse of it here into product term that we are writing in addition, plus term. So that is the first term we got, A plus B plus C. Likewise, we had second one, A. So it's complement, so we'll write A plus, this is also complement, B. Here we don't have complement, so we'll write C complement. Likewise, next third one. So A plus B complement plus C. So here A, here we don't have complement, we'll write it and here we'll write C. So you can see this also, you can see that also, both are same. Likewise for the next term, what is the next term? This is your first term, second, third and this is your fourth. So what we'll write for this A plus here we don't have complement. So we'll write B complement plus C complement. Likewise for writing M4, what is M4 here we do have? A complement plus B plus C. For writing M5, so what is M5 we have? So M5 is this thing. So what is M5 we can write? Here we don't have complement, so we need to write that one. So A plus, so this is A, that means A complement. B, this is what? C complement. Likewise, M6. So this is your M6. So here what we can write? A complement plus B complement plus C. Likewise, you want to write for ABC. So how do we mention ABC? A complement plus B complement plus C complement. So what is the indication, what is symbolic representation for it? It's pi. How do we mention pi? To write the pi, what is this capital M? M0, M1, M2, M3, M4, M5, M6 and M7. So this is the way your three bits input has been mentioned in terms of mean term as well as in terms of max terms. In the problem, they'll give you the bits in numbers. So till now what we have discussed, we talk about the digits, they'll give in the terms of your literals, your bits, that bits we consider. Now in the, from here onwards, they'll give the numbers in this way. So we need to try to write in terms of mean and max term and we need to solve the problems. So thank you for today's video.